In this lecture, we are going to send a sign up request from our React application to our backend Express application. So, for that, let's go to VS Code. Now, our backend application is running on localhost port number 5000. So, from our front end application, if we want to send a request to our backend application, the first thing which we are going to do is let's go ahead and let's open package.json file. And there, we are going to add another property in this package.json file, which is proxy. Okay. And to this proxy, let's specify the root URL of our backend application. And that is HTTP colon localhost port number 5000. Let's save this file here. And let me also close this file. Now, since we have changed the package.json file of our React application, what we also need to do is we need to restart our React application. So if I press Ctrl C, it is going to terminate this process. And then we can again run npm start to restart our React application. So it is going to recompile our React application and rerun it. So this is very important when you are changing something in your package.json file. Once you have changed something in your package.json file, you must restart your React application. So in the meantime, this application is restarting. Let's go back to our VS Code project. And the next thing which we are going to do is in this source folder, we are going to create a new folder and let's go ahead and let's call it as API calls because inside this folder, we are going to create some files and from that file, we are going to make some API calls. Now in here, I'm going to create one file and I'll call it as auth.js. So from this auth.js file, we are going to make API calls to our authentication APIs like login and sign up. But before we do that, in this API calls, let's go ahead and let's create one more file and let's call it as index.js. And inside this index.js, what we are going to do is, first of all, we are going to import Axios. And in order to import Axios, first, we need to install it for this React application. So for that, let's go to our terminal. And here, let me go and let me clear this terminal. So as you can see, currently we are in the client folder of our quick chat app. Here again, I'm going to use npm command and we want to install Axios. Let's press enter and it should install Axios for our React application. And using this Axios, we are going to make API calls from our React application. So Axios is installed. Let's go back and in this index.js file, which we have created inside this API calls, let's go ahead and let's import Axios from Axios package. Okay. And as I mentioned, using this Axios, we are going to make API calls from our React application. Now, what we are going to do here is we are going to create an instance of Axios. So for that, let's create a variable. Let's call it Axios instance. And to create an Axios instance on this Axios, we are going to call a method called create. And this is going to create an Axios instance. And we are going to export that Axios instance from here so that we can use it in other files. And the reason why I'm doing this is because in order to make login and sign up request from our React application, we don't need to send any authorization header. But for the protected routes which we have in our backend application, like get all users, get chats, get messages, or create message, create chat, all these APIs are protected APIs. And in order to make a call to these APIs from our front end application, we also need to send the JSON web token with that request, which we are going to receive when the user will log in. And we are going to send that JSON web token with the request header. So if I add that header here itself on this instance, then wherever we will use that instance, there that header will be automatically present. So here, what we are going to do is we are going to pass an object here. And in there, we are going to set the headers to this. We are going to assign an object. And in that object, we are going to specify the header which we want to set. And here we want to set the 
authorization header okay and here the authorization header it is going to start with a bearer space and then we need to specify the json web token now we have not saved json web token anywhere yet in our front-end application but what we are going to do is when the user will log in in the response we will receive the json web token the authentication token and we are going to save it in the local storage of the browser and then from there we are also going to read it so for now what we will do is we will specify that here it has to read the json web token from the local storage so here we can say local storage dot get item and we are going to call it as token and this token is going to store the json web token so we are reading the json web token from the local storage and we are passing it with this authorization header now this json web token as i mentioned it is not required for login and sign up request but for other requests we need it and that's why i have created this single instance on which we have already added this authorization header and wherever we will use this instance for making the request on that request this header will be automatically added let's save the changes and now let's go ahead and let's import this exios instance in our auth.js file so let me go ahead and let me close this and here let's go ahead and let's import exios instance from so from the current directory we are going to go to index.js file and from there we are exporting this exios instance so that will be exported and that will be assigned to this exios instance okay let's save this file let me close this index.js again and for now i'm also going to close this login file and here we are going to create a function and let's call it sign up user you can call this function anything let's make this u in uppercase let's use arrow function syntax and this function is going to run asynchronously so i'm going to use this async keyword here now why this function is going to run asynchronously because from here we are going to make api calls and in here let's go ahead and let's add a try catch block for this catch block we are going to receive the error object and if there is some error which we are going to receive from the api we simply want to return that error from this function but if there is no error and if we have received the successful response then we are going to store that response in a variable and here we are going to use the await keyword and using this exios instance we are going to make a post request because for the sign up in the backend api we are handling a post request for sign up so from here we are going to make a post request there let's specify the path of that post api and that is slash api slash auth slash sign up right now since we are making a post request with the post request we also need to send some data so let's say we are going to receive that data as a parameter to this function and we are going to pass that as the request body so we are going to receive this user object for this method and we are passing that user object as the request body and then we are going to get some response so we are going to return that response data we are not going to return everything we simply want to return the response data so this response data if i go to postman and if we go to sign up request in the response we are going to send this object where we have the message and success property so this will be the response data okay and this is what we want to return from this function let's save this and now let's go to this index.js of sign up component there first of all let's make this function as async okay and here also let's add a try catch block from the try block we are going to call this sign up user function so for that first of all 
we need to export this function from here so let's also use the export keyword let's save the file here let's go ahead and let's import that function from so from the current directory we'll move one directory up let's move one more directory up and there let's go to api calls folder and from that api calls folder let's go to auth.js file and this auth.js it is returning us this sign up user we are storing it inside this sign up user variable so this sign up user variable is going to store that function now we are going to call that function from here okay and when we are calling that function we also need to pass the user object so we have that user object in this user state let's pass that user object and it is going to return us a response right and this is also going to run asynchronously so let's use await keyword here and then let's go ahead and let's store that response in a variable okay and now here we are going to check if response dot success because if you remember with each response which we are sending from our backend application there we have a success property if that success property is true that means the api executed successfully and it has returned us a success response otherwise if this success is false that means something went wrong and it is going to return us an error response so if the response is success let's go ahead and let's show an alert message where we want to display the message of the response so for that we can say response dot message because each response which we are going to get there we also have the message property else and in here also we are going to write the same thing because if we are going to receive an error response in that case also we are going to have a message property with the error message and finally let's do the same thing in the catch block also so from here also we want to display the response message let's save the changes let's see if everything works so let's go to this terminal and here we have an error and it says response is not defined in index.js file of sign up okay here we have this error because this response we are creating inside the try block so in the catch block it is not accessible so what i will do is before this try block let me go ahead and let me create that response and initially let's assign null to it and then here let's say response equals whatever response this function is going to return us and here why we are creating two functions is because see this sign up is our component so our component should only contain the ui logic what do we want to display in the ui it should not contain the business logic and that's why we have separated the business logic in another file in this case in this auth.js file we are writing the logic of making the api calls in this auth.js file and not in our component file so in this way we are separating the business logic from the ui logic and this is very important this is not mandatory you can write the api call from the component file also but it is not recommended your component file should only contain the ui logic not the business logic with this let's save this file and let's test if we are able to make a sign up api call from our react application or not so let's go to the browser there let's go to the sign up page and there let's create a new user let's call him steve let's say last name is fleming let's say email is steve123 at gmail.com and let's specify a password now when i click on this sign up request let me also go ahead and let me open the network tab okay let's clear everything and let's go ahead and let's click on this sign up button so as you can see a request has been sent to this sign up and now if i open this request 
let's expand this a little bit so we have made a post request and we have received this 201 response which means created okay and if you want to see the payload there you can see the object which we are passing in the request body and if we go to the response in the response we can see this message user created successfully and success is true so the user has been created if we go to compass there let's go to this users collection let me refresh this collection and if i scroll down you see that user steve fleming has been created here but we are getting an error on the ui side so it says it is not able to read the message property and we have this error in on form submit method so in on form submit method we are trying to use this message property here here and here let's go to terminal here we can see oh here it says response is constant okay right so what we are trying to do is we have created this response using const keyword and then later we are trying to change its value but that is not possible because with const we create a constant so here instead of const let's use let keyword let's save the changes now let's go to compass and let's delete that last user again now let's go to our sign up form let me clear everything here let's go to network tab there also let's clear everything let's make a sign up request and now we have this message request failed with status code 400 okay let's see why is that so let's open this request okay here as you can see we have this message user already exist so with that email user already exist but here we had cleared it let me refresh the page okay i think i have deleted other user so let's delete this steven flaming from here let's refresh it and now we have only three users john mark and mary let's go back let me clear the request here let's make the request again and now we have this message user created successfully okay and if we go to compass if we refresh now we can see that user so the user is getting created and now we are also getting the valid response so in this way from our react application now we are calling the sign up api which we created in our backend and using that we are creating we are signing up a user for our chat application so now the user is created in the next lecture let's also call the login api to authenticate the user and receive the authentication token in the response this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day